Dear colleagues, thank you for taking five minutes of your time to analyze this complex case of sternoclavicular instability and give me your opinion. This is the story of a young patient that uh, experienced a trauma in judo when she was 12. She unfortunately got a medial clavicular resection when she was 16 by another surgeon. And this resulted into the beginning of thoracic outlet syndromes with neurological symptoms in CAT1 and vascular compression at the level of the subclavicular artery between the resected medial clavicle and the first rib. Therefore, she had another surgery with first rib resection and scalenectomy with transitory improvement, but soon a recurrence of neurological symptoms. And when she came to me first in 2021, she presented with medial ulnar territory and inferior trunk territory neurological pain. Her physical examination showed a painful instability of the SC joint. She was complaining from this terrible pain with a positive tunnel sign at the level of the cords. And the pain was radiating in the territory of the median and ulnar nerves. This neurological pain was worsened by active mobilization of the upper limb, particularly in forward elevation, as there was no stability of her scapulothoracic complex because of the absence of anterior support resulting from the resection of the medial clavicle. I figured that if we restored some support in the scapulothoracic joint, we could reduce the impediment created by the clavicle on the brachial plexus I therefore tried to do a manual retropulsion to determine whether there was an improvement, and it was the case. She became painless, particularly in those neurological symptoms, with a major improvement of the function. I therefore decided to uh, perform a diagnostic test using a figure of eight brace for four months, and uh, the patient was uh, improved, so the discussion was then to do the functional treatment or a surgery. We decided to perform a right to left scapula tethering instead of doing a scapula thoracic fusion. And uh, we did the right to left scapula tethering using an Achilles tendon allograft that was attached to both the medial borders of the scapulas. This procedure helped to stabilize the situation. We were able to create during clinics and that we reproduced thanks to the figure of eight brace. However, the patient still complained from her SC joint instability. So, to summarize, there was an improvement in terms of pain, including neurological pain, but the patient was still very symptomatic regarding the sternoclavicular instability. The post-op scores were improved, but still low. It was then impossible to leave the patient like this, and we continued discussing with her family and other colleagues and decided to perform a reconstruction of the SC joint using a vascularized bone graft. We chose a fibular bone graft because we thought that a medial femoral condyle would not provide enough bone, would not provide a bone strong enough to have a good support between the clavicle and the sternum. We're a team used to performing free flaps, and we do it as a double team. One team is harvesting the flap and the other team is preparing the recipient site. The recipient site preparation was challenging in regards to the multiple surgeries that were performed before, particularly because of the vascular environment around the sternum in which tunnels had to be drilled in order to pass the Cresselius allograft that was used for the sternoclavicular ligamentoplasty. The sclerotic edge of the medial stump of the clavicle was resected, the subclavian artery, brachiocephalic vein, and pectoralis major nerve were dissected, isolated, and protected. And we prepared the thoracoacromial trunk as the recipient vessels. The fibula was harvested with a skin paddle to monitor the flap postoperatively, placing a strain regarding the length of the bone as the perforator arteries located distally had to be preserved along with the penetrating point of the fibular artery in the bone proximally. After the internal fixation using isolated screws securing a bayonet fitting on the clavicle and a strong fixation medially thanks to the ligamentoplasty, the microvascular anastomoses were made with 10 0 separated stitches and the quality of the vascularization of the flap was controlled intra-op using fluorescence.
post-operative monitoring was carried out with Doppler ultrasound and the post-op x-rays appeared satisfying. Unfortunately, an anterior dislocation of the SC joint was recorded five days post-op. And after collegiate discussion, we decided not to revise the joint reconstruction in order to prevent microvascular complications and impairment. So the patient was discharged after 10 days and controlled in clinics after 45 days with a CT scan showing an osteolysis of the sternum and a satisfactory healing of the fibula on the collateral clavicle. The patient is now very uncomfortable with a very poor function and actually feeling worse than before the last surgery yielding indisputable indication of revision. I suspected the length of the clavicle to be at stake and I therefore measured the healthy and reconstructed clavicles and observed the four centimeters discrepancy. The options that I now have in mind to reliably reconstruct the SC joints are guided by the concern I have related to the poor bone quality of the sternum and it could be either a fusion between the fibula and contralateral clavicle with a controlled on union of the fibula in place of the SC joint or an allograft of the sternum, SC joint and medial clavicle attached on the native sternum and fibula respectively. I'd be grateful if you had any recommendation or advice to help me find the best solution for this young lady who has already been through a long and difficult journey. Thank you very much.